Welcome back to Byline. I'm John Robson, in for vacationing Brian Lilly. One of the stranger items in this week's news is that Quebec's culture minister says she's going to move ahead with hearings on creating a new model of regulating the press in Quebec. I didn't know we needed that at all. But apparently they want to create a status of professional journalist with special privileges that go with that accreditation. So I'm joined now from Toronto by Kathy Shadle. Now, I am a journalist. Oh, yes, one is. Kathy is a blogger. Mm -hmm. She writes Five Feet of Fury, which is www.fivefeetoffury.com. Right. And if Quebec, Quebec journalists have their way, it's going to be kind of qu'il mange les communiqués for you. Uh, do you think that people like me should have privileges that people like you do not? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, maybe you can help me out. I want to know how to say bite me in French because that's going to be my reaction to any kind of licensing of journalists and bloggers. This contradicts everything we think about when we think about journalism, about people being investigative reporters. The idea that you need a license to do something like that is absurd. Well, the, the trouble with my helping you with that translation <laughs> is that the, the professional accreditation goes only to those who set the appropriate tone of respect uh, with regard to such august personages as Quebec's culture minister. And, and we do not, uh, well, we, we don't talk to bloggers, but if we did, we wouldn't help them. And we don't use expressions like that with respect to the government. <laughs> um, because after all, I mean, people in government, they, they, they shouldn't be annoyed by public questioning, should they? No, absolutely not. But I'm not really surprised this is coming out of Quebec. This is the province where you have to ask permission to give your baby a certain name. Uh, and we all know about their language laws. So this doesn't really surprise me. But it is pretty sad that uh, in this day and age of the internet uh, and blogging, I've been doing this for 11 years now, there are still people who don't quite get it. They don't seem to have gotten the point of being a reporter, of being a journalist. Yeah, I, this to me is one of the oddest things. Apparently one of the privileges that would come with that status is uh, the opportunity to spend time with politicians. <laughs> it's supposed to be a reward and not a punishment, I guess. But one of the things I couldn't figure out is if I go and, and bow down before the culture minister and I'm given documents, what's to stop me from then giving them to you? Well, that's true. Uh, it is interesting because there is a little symbiosis going on between the mainstream media and bloggers. My husband is a blogger, for example, and he's broken a lot of stories like the Toronto Public School Mosqueteria story. And believe me when I tell you that he doesn't need a license to uh, get in touch with uh, higher government sources. Higher government sources seek him out. It's, it's the other way around. I don't think this woman quite understands how these things work today. Yeah, th this strikes me very much because one of the things that bloggers do is they'll get on a story. I mean, there's a lot of strange stuff out there. and There's a lot of things people think that aren't true. But bloggers will get onto something and they'll chew on it. And if it is true, they bite into something solid. After a while, uh, those of us accredited as journalists find ourselves obliged to do something about it because people start asking us, why aren't you on this story? And, and that, in my view, is, is an invaluable service. I mean, it's a service to us, which is always nice, but it's a service to the public. Bloggers make things impossible to ignore. That's absolutely true. And the thing that is kind of funny about all that is that, on the one hand, a lot of mainstream journalists talk about how much they hate bloggers, how rude we are, how uh, obnoxious we are. Yet I open the paper, the rare times I do, and see things that I've reported on a week ago suddenly showing up in, under their bylines without any credit. So they call us the parasites, but I think that tide is turning and they're starting to steal things from us. So I don't know how the licenses thing could possibly work. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what the, it'd be the opposite of symbiosis where two groups are both parasitic on the other one. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure how that would, uh, how that would work at all. But uh, it is um, certainly, uh, uh, you, well, you bring up the thing about rudeness. And the fact of the matter is, yeah, lots of people write blogs and they're rude in the same way that lots of people send email and it's rude. I've, I've commented on the fact that the internet, it seems to work on people like tequila. They, they lose their manners and inhibitions and they think they're invisible and they send you incredible notes that they would never have written, let alone walked up to you and said. But uh, then again, anybody can not read your blog if you're just deeply offensive or if they like that kind of thing, they can flock to it. Uh, but you know, just because some people have no manners online doesn't mean that we should clamp down on the internet. It means we should mind our manners. Well, and you make a good point about anonymity. I've never blogged anonymously. My name is on everything that I've 
put up on my blog for better or for worse. Yeah. And uh, I think that if you take out the anonymity, 90% of the obnoxiousness and the inappropriate phraseology and the ad hominem attacks really go out the window. Uh, I'm, I always encourage bloggers to use their names. I think it's just, it's just right, it's just fair. Now, speaking of anonymity versus being identified and held accountable, one thing that people have brought up in terms of the desire to have uh, accreditation is that there are some events where there's a special section for journalists, or journalists will accompany the Prime Minister, or journalists are allowed into a particular part of the House of Commons. Uh, if anybody is considered a journalist, if they blog, how do we control access to events where we can't simply let everybody in? Well, but you already have to have some kind of uh, system in place to determine who's a real journalist. Are they just writing for some tiny alt-weekly in some tiny town? Are they from uh, the New York Times? And there's also a hierarchy of blogging. And uh, I think any uh, you know legitimate person like, say, Glenn Reynolds at Instapundent is recognized as a real journalist at this point. It's like everything else. There's uh, some internal standards of excellence and reputation. And if somebody has a reputation as being a good blogger who's broken stories, again, like my husband, um, I think that they sort of go to the front of the food chain. This is all just still sorting itself out. I think in a few years, this will be a non-issue. Okay, and just for those who are wondering, what's your husband's blog? Oh, it's called Blazing Cat Fur. Uh, he now regrets having called it Blazing Cat Fur now that he's semi-famous. But uh, yes, that's what it is, and he breaks a lot of stories there. He's very, uh, he gets a lot of readers in uh, different ministries and other places like that. They look to him for ideas. Okay, well, that's Kathy Shadel. She would be interesting if she was a journalist, but she's just yeah. a blogger and therefore obviously unworthy of consideration. Yep. Uh, however, <laughs> if you don't happen to share that view, uh, Five Feet of Fury is the name of the blog, www.fivefeetoffury.com.